Gas prices in much of the country have dropped substantially this fall. But in California, the price per gallon has remained much higher than in other states. The costs are pushing some residents to the edge and raising concerns about whether price gouging is to blame. William Brangham has our report on what's behind the spike and the toll that it's taking on the Golden State. Judy, this month, consumers in California were paying roughly $2.61 per gallon more than the national average for gas. The average there is about $6.15 a gallon now, but in some parts of the state, it's been $7 or more. We'll look at what's behind that spike in a moment. But first, we spent the last week talking to people across the state about how these prices at the pump are affecting their daily lives. My name is Crystal Miller. I live in Los Angeles, California, and I work in social media and marketing. The gas prices in LA are super crazy high right now. It's about six or seven dollars a gallon, depending on where you live. My name is Lee Gross. I live in Visalia, California, and I'm a semi-retired agricultural economist. We're just being a little more thoughtful about where we drive and what the value proposition is for the drive. I'm Lorani Jerger. I am uh, living in Northern California, Amador County, and I work for a major health care organization. I'm originally from Oklahoma, proud member of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. It's kind of terrifying, quite frankly, um, to see gas prices where they are. My name is Linda Randall. I'm from Penn Valley, California. I'm an ex-financial analyst. And financially, you know, I'm not a wealthy person by any means. So I mind my pennies um, to try and get by. Is it worth driving 20 miles and burning a gallon of gas to go buy ice cream at a place, one of our favorite places? Or can we buy the ice cream closer and save, you know, at this pays $14. There's so many malls here in LA, but it's so much easier and more convenient now to just shop online versus like wasting gas to drive out there, wasting gas, trying to find parking, and then driving all the way back home, sitting in crazy LA traffic. I saw six seventy nine dollars a gallon on Friday. I didn't have to put gas in my car, so I didn't stop, but I saw it and I was just like, what? <laughs> it, was a, it was a real double take moment to see that here <laughs> in my little town. It was, it was kind of like, what? <laughs> Where am I right now? One of my hobbies is singing, and I sing with the San Francisco Symphony Choir, which is a big deal. But if I want to sing with the San Francisco Symphony, that's 150 miles. It costs me um, between 70 and $80 to go round trip, depending on the price. And so the calculus that I'm making is that's a lot of money. <laughs> the higher gas price comes into play when we do things like uh, support a local beef producer, local, 35 miles away, we've been buying directly from him. And we rethink that, you know, we would like to support him, but with five, six, seven dollar gas, you put that added gas cost into the price of the product that you're picking up and you think, eh, let's, let's change that. My parents actually live towards the Long Beach area and I live more towards the airport. And so I'm the one who drives out to see them every week. And so the gas affects me, um, which is why I pretty much only go out there like once a week. I drive a very economical car um, that gets about 35 miles to the, or 32 miles to the gallon, you know, on the highway. Um, I could fill up for 35 bucks. It's almost $70 now to fill my little 11 gallon tank. I have a sister in Washington State, another sister in Iowa City, and a brother in Albuquerque. Now, to hop in my car and drive 1,500 miles to Albuquerque, the cost of gas to do that, <laughs> that makes that trip almost impossible for me to think about doing. And that means I don't see my family as much. To help people deal with those costs, the state has started to give out inflation relief payments of just over $1,000 to 23 million Californians. And Governor Gavin Newsom has called for a new windfall tax on oil and gas companies in the face of their record profits. But it is still a difficult time for many. So for a closer look at what's behind all of this, I'm joined by Severin Borenstein. He's professor of business and public policy at the University of California, Berkeley. Professor Borenstein, thanks so much for being here. Um, we heard some genuine impacts on people because of these high prices. People will look at what's happening in California and say, aha, it's California's fees and regulations and environmental rules that are driving up the price of gas there. How much of that is true? 
Well, that's definitely a part of it. California has higher gas taxes than the rest of the country. It has some environmental fees from a cap and trade program and a low carbon fuel standard. And it uses a cleaner burning gasoline that costs a little bit more to make. But when you add all that up right now, that accounts for about 85 cents a gallon. That's a big difference, but that's only a part and less than half of the differential we're seeing right now between California and the rest of the country. So I understand that back in 2015, you saw a similar spike that went up and never went back down. And you referred to this as the mystery gasoline surcharge. What is that? So what happened is we had a refinery fire, the price spiked up and the wholesale price, the spot price of gasoline spiked up first. And then the price came back down. And we've had these happen ever since we went to a different blend of gasoline in 1995. And usually the retail price then comes back down and the differential is back to that basis of taxes and environmental fees. In 2015, that didn't happen. And on average, since 2015, California's prices have averaged an extra 30 cents a gallon higher than the rest of the country, beyond what you can explain through higher taxes and fees. Overall, since 2015, that amounts to over $40 billion for California drivers. I mean, that's a huge amount of money out of people's pockets. I mean, is that just a function of oil companies and gas companies and refiners making a profit as, as companies are, are want to do? Is that what's going on there? Well, we're not exactly sure what's going on. I have been arguing for the last seven years that California really needs to invest some money in a serious investigation to find out, because this is a huge amount of money beyond what you could normally explain with just the taxes and fees. It is clear that it, that differential over the last seven years is not at the refinery level, because that spot price of gasoline, the price for giant uh, shipments of gasoline, is actually about in line with where it should be. The differential seems to be downstream in the marketing, distribution, and retailing sector. Those sectors have very complex contracts with the refiners. The refiners have a lot of influence over what they charge. And it's unclear who's actually collecting the money and why that is so resilient. One of the things that is worth noting is that California has a much smaller share of off-brand stations than the rest of the country. A very small share of our gasoline goes through the mom and pop. So we're not seeing the discipline enforced on competition that we would in other parts of the country where those stations make up a bigger share. I mean, some of the critics of the oil and gas companies say that this is price gouging, that the, the, the prices are up and they have no incentive whatsoever to bring them back down, regardless of the economy. Is there any evidence that that's true? Well, I haven't seen any evidence that they're actually colluding. Uh, short of that, these firms are going to try to make as much money as they can. We rely on competition to keep them from driving those prices up. And California definitely has a less competitive gasoline market than the rest of the country, partially because we use this cleaner burning gasoline formulation that we can't trade with the rest of the country, partially because two refiners in California control about half of the entire gasoline market. So we, we really do have a potential problem here. The, the gasoline companies claim that the real problem is various regulatory barriers, and I think that's worth looking into. Unfortunately, the politicians get very interested in this when the price spikes and then the price comes back down, and even if it stays a little higher than it should, they move on to other issues. I think it's time that we really need to dig into this and not lose focus. All right, that is Severin Borenstein at UC Berkeley. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.